famous landmark made entirely of flat plates and angle iron. The largest angle iron ever made was used in that bridge. And that is essentially the plastic equivalent of angle iron. The bridge made up of plates riveted together with pieces of angle iron. The plates are flat and are quite easy to bend. Angle line is riveted onto the edges of the plate, like that you see. That's half of it. That's all of it. And that bit just goes there like that. I don't know if you can see that in the shadow. Let's see if I can get a better view of it. Then rivets are banged in and together it goes. The rivets go in red hot. The end gets bashed over by somebody on the other side with a riveting tool. And when they cool down, they pull the plates together so hard that the plates physically grip each other. The rivets clamp the plate together. The stress doesn't go through the rivets. It goes directly from one plate to the other. The rivets just clamp them together. But as you can see, that's not very strong. I take this little hybrid car here and it's a bit saggy. Here's a long girder and as you can see it's a bit floppy. Have you ever seen builders lifting long steel beams off the back of a truck? You'll often see that they actually warp and rock and wobble. If I put any pressure on that, look what happens. Not a lot of strength in that. Even if I had four of these and tried to sit on them, you'd think, don't be stupid, it'll fall down. Now watch magic happen. I'm now building a Sydney Harbour Bridge girder. This is what a Sydney Bridge girder looks like. This might take a little while. Building the Sydney Harbour Bridge did take a little bit of a while. But this is how they did it. I need slightly longer rivets to put this extra plate on. See how the plates are doubled up at the joints? coming along, dropping rivets all over the place here, I must admit. Mind you, they dropped a lot of real ones as well. Notice where there's a joint. They put an overlapping plate. Then you have longer rivets. Some of the rivets in the bridge were over a foot long because they stacked up so many plates where they needed extra strength, they needed to be that long so that, to get them all together. And so, a nice speed along with this uh, time-consuming task. There. Only one more plate to go. That goes on there. And you see again there's a doubling up plate on the inside there. That'll all be riveted together when these little plastic keys are standing in for rivets going to place. Now on the modern box beam, on the modern girder, they don't rivet them, they weld them. And what they do because they don't have the rivets they just weld everything on the corners and there's no rivets it's just a weld in fact a modern box beam often looks like a concrete beam I'm still doing some more riveting I need to rivet inside here last plates going on reinforcing plate last few rivets going in All right I think that's it and it has absolutely no problem taking the weight of the car so strong it can even take the weight of the car if I do this watch this the car in my pocket watch. Oh isn't that amazing it not only took my weight I could jump up and down on that and it wouldn't break and that is a Sydney bridge girder. And that is why the bridge doesn't fall down. Isn't that remarkable? This is a little science lesson I showed my son some years ago. And he's since become an engineer, but I did it in where I live. 
it's been nice to do a YouTube video of the same demonstration in front of the very thing that inspired it the famous Sydney Harbour Bridge and this stuff is called Fisher Technic and it's available on special order or just look up on eBay there's plenty of it on eBay or free trade or trade me or whatever it is in your part of the world that stands for eBay and that's a Harbour Bridge girder in fact the main arch beam is like one of these and another one of these beside it with plates going across so there's four verticals and another set of horizontals Woohoo the sun's come out well there's your beam there's a little hybrid car and has absolutely no trouble taking the weight of it whatsoever. There it goes, vroom vroom. Or rather whiz whiz as it's part electric. In fact, it'll even take the weight of the little car if I put the little car in my pocket and climb on top of the girder myself. Watch this. The amount of time spent on the girder has nothing to do with it. It's to do with my ability to balance on it. As I am not in any way, shape or form a natural gymnast. Engineers generally don't make good gymnasts, but that is just amazing. That's made of essentially floppy bits of plastic that could barely stand up under their own weight and put together like that, they can take the weight that somebody weighs around 16 stone. Imagine how strong that would be, made of thick steel plate. And that is why the Harbour Bridge doesn't fall down. I just noticed I left two rivets out. But it still didn't buckle even with two rivets missing on one of the joints. You know, that is amazingly strong. But, having fully assembled it, won't fit in my case. So I have to take it apart. Very, very strong stupidly strong and yet when you take it all apart well, I'll get these things to one hook you put them in and they go turn a quarter turn and they just lock in and uh, but out they come all gone back to being floppy again it's the thing about steel steel is very strong it's also very flexible which is why you need to brace it and in fact not a lot of people know this but whoops running along the underside of the deck of the bridge that you can't easily see it from here in fact you can't see it at all there's a horizontal truss brace that braces all of the very tall up and down girders to stop them bowing they hid that truss under the deck that extra brace to avoid spoiling the view of the bridge in fact, because it had to be self-supporting when they built it, it's actually, with the arch now complete and joined in the middle, much, much stronger than it needs to be. Just finished making a little video about bridge girders. Oh, we've got a ship coming out. That's a good shot. Well, I'll continue to dismantle this. There she goes. Right. Having fiddled around with bits of plastic, here is the bridge itself close up. That is epic. Here's the thing I've just made. And you hold it up to the bridge, it's all basically this stuff. The famous opera house. That's another engineering marvel in itself. A stunning story of curved concrete. A uh, long ship going out. So, tall ship. There's a tall ships race happening on Australia Day. And I think there's a lot of those manoeuvring around getting themselves ready. <laughs> 